Upon entering the patient zone, hands must be decontaminated before and after each episode of patient care. Liquid soap or antimicrobial disinfectant should be used. Disposable hand towel should be used to dry your hands and disposed of in a foot-operated waste bin. Prepare a trolley and ensure all surfaces are clinically clean using a detergent wipe. Attach a disposable bag and make sure you thoroughly clean the collection tray surfaces and underneath the sharps box. Assemble all the necessary equipment for the procedure, checking packaging and expiry dates. Preparation is key and will ensure the procedure goes smoothly and without interruption. Decontaminate your hands, introduce yourself to the patient, confirm identity, looking at the name and date of birth, and explain the procedure. Having gained verbal consent and checked for allergies, ensure there is adequate lighting and support the chosen arm on a pillow. This is normally the patient's non-dominant arm. This will ensure patient's comfort and facilitate venous access. Having prepared the patient, Don a disposable apron and ensure all the necessary equipment is in position. It's important to be organised, so open and prepare a syringe and then a sterile waterproof dressing. Ensure you have the correct size of cannula for the patient's age, the reason for insertion and their condition. Prior to cannula insertion, don a pair of well-fitting gloves. Apply a single-use tourniquet approximately 10 cm above the intended puncture site. It's important to take time to observe, assess and select a suitable vein. You can ask the patient to clench their hand to further aid venous filling. Clean the patient's arm over a large enough area to accommodate the dressing. This area should be allowed to dry thoroughly. Do not repalpate the vein. Prepare the cannula and inspect the device carefully. Hold it in your dominant hand. Align the needle with the vein and apply manual traction to the skin. On entering the vein, a flashback will be seen. Withdraw the needle and a second flashback means you can advance the cannula into the vein. Place sterile gauze under the end of the cannula and release the tourniquet. Gently apply pressure above the vein, remove the needle and dispose of it carefully into the sharps box. Allow blood to fill the device and attach a cap or suitable interconnect system. Interconnects tend not to be used in situations where maximum fluid rates are required, for example in emergency departments. Using the steri strips supplied, secure the cannula wings to support the cannula. Drop 5 ml of sodium chloride in order to flush the cannula, which will ensure patency. Flushing should be carried out according to local policy. This must be prescribed on an as-required basis on the patient's cardex. Apply the remainder of the dressing as shown and ensure that the transparency covers the insertion site. Remember to date and sign the supplied annotation strip and don't obscure the insertion site. It's important to instruct the patient to report any swelling, redness or pain. Dispose of clinical waste and dispose of your PPEs, gloves, followed by apron. Decontaminate your hands on leaving the patient zone 
and safely dispose of any clinical waste into a clinical waste bin. Finally, record the procedure in the PVC bundle.